Hi, and this is section 4-5, which is graphing using slope-intercept form. You might want to go right now, and actually you should, go to page 244. You might want to pause the video right now, go to page 244, have your book open. All right. Um, in this section, when I test you on it, when I quiz you on it, I'm not going to let you use a calculator because you should be able to graph using slope-intercept form without a calculator. And the other thing is we're not going to be allowed to make any tables of points. I want you to understand what slope-intercept form is, how you can easily graph using slope-intercept form without using a calculator, without making tables. So I'm going to take those things away from you when I quiz and test you on this. Slope-intercept form means that you've solved for y and simplified. Now, I've already made you do that in this chapter. You know, I've already said it's easy to graph an equation if you've already solved it for y. And when you do solve for y, your equation will end up looking like this. And this form is called slope-intercept form. y will be by itself. Y will equal some number times X, and I guess I could put in here, I put the general form is plus. It could be plus or it could be minus. It could be either one. It could be plus some number or plus some number or it could be minus some number, either one. So normally in the book, you'll see that it's just MX plus B, and they use that to represent slope-intercept form. An equation of this form, here would be an example of it. It could be something just like this, uh, y equals 2x plus 5. And we should be able to look at that and make a graph very easily because this is already in slope-intercept form. I'm just going to erase that before I show you my next little note, okay? Um, M stands for slope. So the number being multiplied by x, this number is the slope. And remember, slope means rise over run. And then the number that represents b, that's called the y-intercept. Now remember, the y-intercept, we've already learned what a y-intercept is. It's where our line intersects the y-axis. So when you have an equation in slope-intercept form, the number m is your slope, and the number b is where the line intersects the y-axis. So when I wrote down just a minute ago y equals 2x plus 5, this is in slope-intercept form. My slope would be 2, and my y-intercept right now would be a 5, and I can use those two numbers to easily graph this equation. All right. So let's, let's do that. Let's, and I think the easiest thing for me to do to show that would be to do some with you. And if you go to your book work and you look at a question like number 22, it's going to ask you to graph y equals 3x plus 2. Well, this should be really easy to do. Okay? First step. This is in slope-intercept form. You can see that. M is 3 and B is 2. So what does that tell me? Well, if B is positive 2, that means you have a Y-intercept of 2. So I'm just going to go ahead and graph that point. That means that the, the line crosses the Y-axis at 2. The slope is 3. Now remember, a slope of 3 means that we are rising 3, running 1, 3 over 1. So let's graph these points then. So if I go to the point 0, 2, if I apply a slope of 3 over 1, that means I should go up 3, right 1, and put a point. Oop, let me turn this layer on. Right 3, up 1, put a point. Right 3, up 1, put a point. Right 3, up 1, put a point. And there's some points that I can actually, I'll just darken them in, and I can get out my ruler draw a line through those points, put arrows at the end. I've just graphed this line. I did not need a calculator, and I certainly didn't need a table to do that. Very simple to do. I can get it because this is in slope-intercept form. If you know your intercept and you know the slope, you should be able to graph this very quickly without a calculator and without a table being made. Question 25, here's another one. Y equals 1 quarter X minus 5. 
my slope is a quarter and my y-intercept, now remember, I should probably erase this and do this again, this is minus 5. I can add the opposite and that might be important because I need to know that my y-intercept is actually a negative 5. So I'll graph the point 0, negative 5. Now my slope is a quarter. Now remember, a slope of a quarter means I'm rising 1, running 4. So let me do that. Rise 1 and run 4. Rise 1 and run 4. Rise 1 and run 4. And you notice when I do that, I could now darken those in. Actually, I could even make another point. Since I'm rising 1, running 4, if I go in the other direction, I could drop 1 and go left 4 to get extra points. Get out my ruler, draw a line through this, put arrows at the end. Okay? Again, we don't need to make a table of points to do that. I don't want you making a table of points to do that. It's not going to make it easy. It's going to make it worse. Okay? Very simple. Take your y-intercept, negative 5, and from that y-intercept, apply your slope of 1 quarter. This should be very simple to do without a calculator and without a table. If you're making a table, um, I tried to show here. Let me show you why that's not a great thing to do. If you try to make a table, this is the type of garbage I've seen people do. They're making a table and they're plugging in 1 and they're taking a quarter times 1 plus negative 5 and getting negative 4.75. If you think that's easier to do than this, that's, that's ridiculous. It's not easier to do. And remember, I'm not letting you use a calculator. It's going to take you longer to make a table of this than just using slope-intercept form. Okay? Let's do one more, 27. Now, before you graph number 27, do you notice that this is not in slope-intercept form? Slope-intercept form, remember, looks like y equals mx plus b. you got to solve for y first, so let's do that. i got to solve for y first. So I'm going to take away 7x from each side. And let me just make sure that this is clear what I did. I took away 7x from each side. And then I can always add the opposite. And then I divided by negative 2, which gives me negative 11 over negative 2 plus negative 7x over negative 2. Remember, I should break this up into separate fractions. And then I get positive 5 and a half. 11 over 2 is 5 and a half, plus I can't reduce 7 halves x. Okay, well now I can, I can graph this because this is in slope-intercept form. I have y equals, here's my mx plus b. So right now my y-intercept is 5 and a half. Can you see that? My y-intercept right now, here's my y-intercept. My y-intercept is 5 and a half. My slope is 7 halves. That means if I rise 7, I should run 2. Okay, now since rising 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and running 2 is off my screen, I'll just go in the reverse direction. I'll drop 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and go 2 to the left. Well, there's two points. Get out my ruler, draw a line through it, arrows at the end. I just graph this equation properly. Very simple to do. Okay? Um, I guess the only other thing I'd want to talk about, couple, two more quick things. When you look at 11 to, to 16 in the book work, go to page 247 and look at 11 to 16. They're going to ask you in the directions to rewrite the equation in slope-intercept form. If you closely look at 11 through 16 right now, do you notice none of those are in slope-intercept form? Y is not isolated in any of those. Remember, slope-intercept form, Y has to be by itself. So all they're asking you to do is rewrite those in slope-intercept form, they're not even asking you to graph 11 to 16. They're asking you then to identify the slope and y-intercept. So all you have to do in 11 to 16 is rewrite the equation in slope-intercept form and then identify what is the slope, what is the y-intercept. Now, in number 27, we had to do all that, plus they wanted me to graph it. So I actually had to do more in 27 than they asked me even to do in numbers 11 through 16. Or if you look at 3 to 6, they're not asking you to graph anything. They just want you to identify what is the slope and what is the y-intercept. I guess one other thing that we should quickly talk about 
is on page 246, and that would be parallel lines. Okay? And what are parallel lines and how is that important to today? Okay, well, first of all, parallel lines are two lines in the same plane, two lines in the same plane that do not intersect. And the reason we say in the same plane, I, I think it's hard for me to explain that on paper. I can do that in class tomorrow, okay? Two lines in the same plane that do not intersect are parallel. If two lines are not in the same plane and they don't intersect, those are called skew lines. Again, I, that would be hard for me to show in a picture here. I think it would be easier because it's three-dimensional, and I can't really show three-dimensional on this. So in class tomorrow, I'll make sure you understand what's the difference between parallel lines, two lines in the same plane that don't intersect, versus what would be skew lines. Okay, uh, the key thing with today in parallel, if two lines have the same slope, they are parallel. So that would be, I guess, an important thing you should know. I would put that in my notes. Two lines with the same slope are parallel. You know, on my homework audits, that'd be a good good question or a good statement to have. You can always tell if two lines are parallel. Like for example, y equals 3x minus 5, y equals 3x plus 18. Now do you notice both of these equations have a slope of 3? They both have a slope of 3. Well, since the slopes are the same, I would know right now that these lines are parallel because they have the same slope. Okay? So when two lines are parallel, their slopes must be the same. I guess I could write it that way, too. Two lines are parallel if their slopes are the same, and two lines with the same slope, obviously, would be parallel lines. So that's the other important thing that we would need to know for today. They will ask us in questions like 30 and 31, they will ask us if these lines are parallel. And the way we would show that on paper is we would show using the slope formula that my lines are having the same slope. You can't, in number 30, for example, you can't just look at the picture and say, well, I think these two lines are parallel. They look like it. You'd have to show me using your slope formula, you'd have to show me using this that the two lines, that at least two of those lines in the picture have the same slope via the formula. Okay? I'm going to stop the video there. This one wasn't uh, too bad then, not too long. And when you come into class tomorrow, we can talk about the difference between parallel lines and skew lines because parallel are in the same plane. And we'll get uh, the book work going then tomorrow. All right?